happens. I'm going to go live. And I am now live on YouTube. So hi, everybody. Uh, I'm JJ. I'll be giving this talk in just a minute or two. Uh, I am also presenting to some folks in a Google meeting. So um, I'm going to allow them uh, a couple extra minutes to just filter in to come check everything out. So um, please bear with me while we wait for the last few people to filter into the Google meeting. But if you are watching this, thank you for coming to watch. I hope it's informative and you find it interesting and uh, maybe useful uh, and uh, engaging. So. I'll start in just a minute here. All right, so a couple more people have filtered into the Google meeting. Um, I will let people to continue to come join if they'd like, but I'm going to go ahead and get started because I don't want to keep... Um, people waiting too long who are watching on YouTube. So, um, hi everybody, I am JJ. I am a developer relations engineer with Deephaven Data Labs, and I'm here today to talk about uh, the Open Dota API, Python, and Deephaven. Uh, basically, I will be describing and showing some of the results of my efforts to use the Open Dota API to uh, pull uh, data in regarding the video game Dota 2 into uh, a Deephaven Python session. Um, so I'll go through a little bit of the work that I did, the uh, a lot of details about the Open Dota API, and I will show some of the results of my work. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this presentation to about 20 to 25 minutes and uh, leave some uh, a few minutes for questions at the end. And for those of you watching on YouTube, you likely cannot hear my desktop audio if anybody asks a question in the Google meeting and you can't hear it, I will repeat the question before I answer it. So the first question I have to answer is what is the Open Dota API? Uh, the Open Dota API is an open source, publicly available REST API for the video game Dota 2. It was put together by a group of developers. I am not sure actually if they are affiliated with the, uh, the developers of the game th themselves, um, but a an open source, publicly available REST API that contains uh, data for the game Dota 2. Um, now this data, uh, th this API has an absolute ton of data available for you to take a look at. Um, OpenDota.com also has analytics related to the data that they have available. If you head over there and check it out, uh, you can take a look at matches, look at your own performance, look at other players' performance, see how the top professionals play this game, uh, and so on and so forth. And I'll, I'll get a little bit more into each one of those interfaces shortly. Um, so that begs the second question, what is Dota 2? So for anybody in the audience who doesn't play Dota 2, I'm going to give the quick and dirty. Um, keep in mind that I don't play Dota 2. I played uh, the original Dota back when it was a custom game for Warcraft 3 in the mid-2000s. So I am coming from a, a place of some ignorance here, um, but I do uh, have enough knowledge about MOBAs in general to talk on this topic. So Dota 2 is a free-to-play uh, multiplayer online battle arena, or MOBA for short. Um, it was originally created as a custom game or a mod for the video game Warcraft 3, and then Valve Entertainment caught on to just how popular the game had become as a custom game and brought on the lead community developer to be the primary developer on Dota 2 itself. And since then, Dota 2 has grown to become one of the two most popular MOBAs available and one of the top popular uh, professional gaming or esports games uh, available. It is also the most lucrative esport uh, uh, currently with its yearly international tournament uh, generating over $40 million both this year and last year in prize money. Um, so Dota 2 is a MOBA, which like other MOBAs, like most other MOBAs, is played uh, as a five-on-five -five competitive game with two teams of five, uh, ha each having the sole objective of destroying the enemy team's core structure in Dota 2. This is known as the Ancient. This, uh, what you see on screen here, is the single map in the game, and each team's Ancient is denoted as an orange star in opposite corners of the map. You can see the map here is divided into red and green sides. 
each team, the, uh, the Radiant team, will spawn on the green diamond in the bottom left, and the red team or the dire team will spawn on the green diamond in the top right. Throughout the course of the game, players and computer-controlled characters will move down each of the three lanes towards each other and start duking it out. Players can increase their experience level and their gold by being near enemies that are killed or killing enemies. Additionally, um, on top of the lanes themselves that they can run down, there are areas in between each of the lanes denoted by the blue triangles there. Um, each of those contains a number of neutral computer-controlled characters that can be killed for both gold and experience rewards. Throughout the game, players will use the gold and experience to power up their own abilities, gain, a new, gain new abilities, as well as buy items that increase their power level. And like I said, the sole objective is to destroy the enemy team's ancient before they can destroy yours. So even if you are losing a game and your team gets lucky enough to secure a kill on the enemy team's ancient, the game ends immediately and you have won. Um, so with that said, I will jump back into discussion about the Open Dota API. I would like to just briefly discuss usage of the API for both the free and premium tiers. Uh, free API usage does not require an API key, so you can just go ahead and start using it without doing any authentication. Um, your limits on the use of the API with no API key are 60 requests a minute and 50,000 requests a month. If you go over either of these, it will simply return a, a status code saying that your request was unsuccessful. Um, so all of the work that I did is designed towards the free tier of usage. However, it is definitely scalable towards premium tier usage. And premium tier usage uh, will give you an API key. You link a payment method. You don't pay anything until you actually start to use over 50,000 requests a month. With, a, an AP, with an API key and a payment method, you are limited to 1,200 requests in a minute. However, you get unlimited requests in a month. Obviously, you're limited to you know however, however many minutes there are in a month uh, times 1,200. But as you can imagine, um, that comes out to a very, very large number. And then the pricing model is a penny for every 100 requests, you go over the 50,000. So, and that rounds up. So if you hit 50,000 on one request, so you're gonna be uh, billed one penny at the end of the month. Um, as far as paid uh, REST APIs, uh, this is actually really cheap compared to other REST APIs that I've found and their pricing models. Um, and as I'll show in a little bit, the amount of data you get from a single API request is uh, quite, quite extraordinary and it would be quite hard to uh, rack up a very, very large bill with this API. I mean, it, uh, if you do, then you are uh, parsing through just enormous and almost uh, hard, to, hard to imagine amounts of data. So there are a, a large number of interfaces available in the REST API. Um, I will be covering four of the interfaces shown on the right here. This is not a comprehensive list. This is, these are the eight that I explored myself. Four that I'll be discussing today and are the ones that are in the, uh, in the publicly available GitHub repository that I've created are as follows. They are the matches, heroes, live, and constants interfaces. The matches interface gives you data for a particular match given an, an integer match ID. The heroes interface gives you information on all heroes in the game their abilities, their attributes, uh, their names, um, and kind of strangely enough, the, the number of legs each, each hero has, even though it has no bearing on gameplay whatsoever. If you ever wanted to know how many legs each hero has, this is the place to go. Um, the live interface gives you information on the top 100 currently ongoing or recently played matches. Um, so that is probably my favorite interface of them all. I thought that one was really cool. And then lastly, the constants interface has information on a number of things that don't change very often. Things like uh, chat wheel options, emotes you can use, uh, items in the game. You can also get hero information from the constants interface, different game modes, uh, clusters and servers and regions that uh, you can play games hosted on, things like that. Um, I do plan in the future to slowly increase the capabilities of the GitHub repository, the application that I've created to perhaps cover some of these other interfaces or just enhance the capabilities with the interfaces that I've currently worked with. Um, so I did list them here just as you know, you can see that there's more available than the things that I've covered. So as far as, uh, before I jump into code, I would just like to note the pros and cons of the API, and I would also like to note that the pros greatly outweigh the cons. So first and foremost, the amount of data you get from a single API request is quite enormous. Um, in fact, it's actually kind of intimidating, which I think is a good thing. The more data I have to play with, the happier I am. Um, 
So like a, if you parse a single match, if you uh, request one single match, I will show shortly that you get just a humongous wall of data to parse, which I think is super cool. Um, second off, and I already covered this, is the free usage is very, very generous. Uh, 50,000 requests a month is a lot, um, especially given the amount of data you can get from a single request. And then lastly is that I find it, uh, I found it kind of difficult to find APIs just like this one. I have long been interested in the intersection of video games and data science. Um, Dota 2 being as popular as it, as it is, I got really excited when I found this interface and I found just how much data I could get from it. Um, I've always been really interested in how game developers balance things, perhaps the tools they use to determine what is considered to be fair and what's not, and how games get how games evolve over time based on the competitive scene. Um, so some cons of the API, again, these are greatly outweighed by the pros, but first and foremost, lack of user action data. I was really hoping to find something like time series, uh, based, uh, basically a time series list of user actions. So player A that controls hero A, you know, moves towards this location at, times T, uh, at time T, has this ability at time T1, um, you know, died at time T2, etc. I wasn't able to find some anything uh, exactly like that. I found some stuff similar, but I was really hoping to take a closer look at how a game evolved over time and perform analytics with that. Um, again, I, I was still able to perform some of my own analytics, but not quite in the way that I was hoping to. Second off is some missing data. Um, a lot of what, um, as I mentioned, uh, the Open Dota REST API is a public uh, is publicly available. It is open source, so you can look at the code. A lot of what the Open Dota API offers is based on parsing replays. Um, so if a replay is missing for a particular match, a lot of fields will just be missing from the request, as opposed to being empty, which can make it programmatically difficult to work with. Um, however, I have the work that I've done is in hopes of removing some of the frustration of dealing with missing data. Um, and then lastly is some aspects of the API have difficult to find documentation. For instance, um, on the map image that I showed earlier, there were a lot of icons. A number of those correspond to buildings. The API has information for a particular match as to whether or not a building has been destroyed or not. That information is represented as a bit mask. And in a bit mask, each bit, a one or a zero, corresponds to a particular building being alive or dead. And I found it quite difficult to find which bit in the mask corresponded to which building. I actually had to dig down in a support forum thread from a few years ago to find the actual answer. And as much as, you know, it's a, I, I haven't paid a penny for this, so I, I really shouldn't complain about something that's free. Um, and the answer is out there. It was just a little difficult to find. And before, the last thing I want to cover before I jump into the code is about a week and a half ago, I gave a quick talk on REST APIs. Um, that was for an application of, crypto, uh, of cryptocurrency data. Uh, given that the Open Dota API is also a REST API, the workflow is basically the exact same. It's a three-step process in Python where first you'll make a request to the API, you will check the response, and then parse the data. However, my talk a week and a half ago focused primarily on steps one and two, simply making the request and checking the response. I didn't focus on parsing data. Today I'll focus a lot more on step three. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to jump in a code. Uh, please give me a minute here just to share a different screen in the Google meeting, and we will get right to it. Um, I am, please note that I'm also uh, streaming via OBS, which takes up a large um, portion of my processor's computing power. So certain queries that I'll run will take significantly longer than they would otherwise. Uh, so just bear with me as that happens. Here is the screen I want to share. Okay, so I'm this. Uh, what I have open here is um, my Deephaven Python console. I've got a few scripts at the bottom. I'm going to run through. Um, I'm first going to show what the raw data you get from the API looks like, and then I'll second show what the data you get or what data looks like uh, when you use my application. Yes, and I will zoom in. Um, hopefully, that's a little bit more readable. Um, this up a little bit. Okay, so this first script, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull from the matches interface, and I'm going to pull for a given match ID. Now, these match IDs are very large numbers. Uh, this game has been out for a number of years, and it's highly popular with hundreds of thousands of concurrent players at any given time. I believe the average for the last month was almost 500,000 average concurrent players. Um, so the match ID is in the billions or trillions. 
Um, this particular match that I'll be pulling uh, here is for a professional game that was played five days ago between the top currently ranked team, Team OG, and then another team, um, I forget the name of it, uh, the other team actually upset Team OG in the, in, the, in the case of this match. So when I run this, uh, again, this is going to take a couple extra seconds than it may otherwise, um, but so what I did was I first uh, set the URL as a variable, I make the request using the Python request package, I print the status code, convert it to JSON, and I print a few attributes about it. So first and foremost, the status code I get is 200. Um, like other REST APIs, the Open Dota API has a successful uh, status code of 200. So if you get that 200 status code, it means your request was successful and you got some data out of it. Uh, when you convert it to JSON, what you get in Python is a dictionary. So a set of, a set of key value pairs where you can access those values based on a given key. I then print uh, the length of the dictionary, so the number of keys and uh, the number of keys there are. In this case, there are 46 unique keys for a given match, and then I print out each one of those keys. So for a given match, you can see a large number of information. You can see uh, barracks status. Barracks are a type of building in the game. Um, they have information on team fights here. Um, I don't know how many team fights this particular match has. Uh, you can see skill of players involved, wrapped information, chat during the game. Um, how players performed, other things like that. And just to show, uh, to show just how much data you get from an, a, get a single match, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this for yourself. Um, I'm going to print the entire match data dictionary, and we're going to see an absolutely humongous wall of text pop up. I could scroll up. If I scrolled with my scroll wheel, it would take me probably hours to get through all of this. Um, but you can see this is from a single API request. Um, it's actually kind of impressive, and like I said, a little bit intimidating, but hey, I'm always happy to have more data to work with. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here, and that was the first script, so I'm just gonna clear the screen um, and move on to the next one. So the second script that I have is, uh, the second script that I have is the live, uh, we'll work with the live interface. So the live interface gives you information on the top 100 currently ongoing or recently played games. And so what I, once again, I printed the status code of 200, so it's a success. This time around, you get a list instead of a dictionary. And in fact, this is a list of dictionaries you get from it. It has 100 uh, different items in it, so each one of those items corresponds to a given match. And then I've printed the uh, average matchmaking rating of everyone in involved. Matchmaking rating, for anybody who's unfamiliar, is basically an, a score you are assigned as a player of a game that determines your skill level. The higher the number, the better you are. Uh, all of the numbers in here are very high. There are some zeros. That means there's some information missing for that given match. Um, but this just goes to show uh, that all of these numbers being above 8,000, at least the ones that aren't zero, means all of these players are highly skilled at this game. Now I clear the screen again. Move on to the next one. So the next I'm going to pull from the heroes interface. So once again, I'm going to follow the same workflow. We'll see a status code of 200, and I'll print out some information regarding each hero. You, so when you convert this data to JSON format, you get a list. And once again, it's a list of dictionaries. There are 123 items in the dictionary because there are 123 currently available heroes in the game. And then I've printed out the name of each one that you get. So here is a list of all of the heroes and their names. And I'll show in a minute that when you use my app, you get more information than just hero names. And it's nicely formatted in a deep haven table or a pandas data frame. Or if you want to work with the raw JSON, it's also got that. And then lastly, as far as looking at raw data, I just want to take a quick look at the constants interface and what sub interfaces are available there. So once again, we get a list out of it and here's what the list is. So each one of these is a sub interface within the constants interface. If you want to pull from any of these interfaces, the URL is the same as the, the URL you would pull from what I just did, which is api.opendota.com slash api slash constants, and you would just add one of these to the end. So if I wanted information on the ancients, it would be opendota.com slash api slash constants slash ancients, and it gives you a lot of information. And as far as my work goes, I covered three of these interfaces. I did chat wheel, game mode, and items, and I'll show those shortly. So the next script is the first one where I'll use my own application. Um, when you run the code, or when you start up my application, it runs a number of scripts in application mode, which means that they get run before the, the session will pop up in your browser window. And these define a few key functionalities. 
The first of which I'm going to cover is pulling data for a given match. So we see here that I use the get Dota 2 match function, which is defined on startup, and I give it the same match ID that I did in this script back here. So if I run this, well, this will take a few seconds. Again, I'm streaming on OBS as well as Google in a Google meeting, so this is probably going to take five to ten times longer than it would otherwise. Um, but I'll print out a list of all the attributes of the class that gets created as a result of this function call. Um, there are six in total. Uh, the first of which is the match ID, which you pass, pass as input. There are two subclasses. Um, there is a table of chat information for the given game. Um, there are the team fights for the game. Uh, the two subclasses are the deep match details and information related to players of the match or that, that participated in the match. Um, and we'll see them pop up here in just a second. Sorry, this does take uh, quite a bit longer when I am uh, streaming on OBS or via OBS as well as in a uh, Google Meet. So here we go. We've got six attributes. Um, if they're capital lettered, uh, I follow the uh, Python's PEP8 standards. So these means these are also classes. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and so chat itself is a table. So um, I can say chat table equals uh, Dota2 match.chat. And I have this nicely formatted deep haven table with information about uh, chat that occurred in the game. Um, we each has a timestamp, a set of constants, and a player number. Uh, in the case of a negative timestamp, that means it occurred during the drafting phase, which happens before a game starts. And if you see a player number 10, that means it's actually a spectator and not someone involved in the game itself. You'll also see a set of numbers here in the contents. Those correspond to options in the chat wheel that's available in the game. These are emotes that, dis that display text in a different format um, or have images or something like that. So up next, I'm going to go ahead and pull. This is so uh, from my application uh, upon startup, it creates a class called Dota 2, which has four subclasses. There's heroes, items, game modes. Um, and chat wheel. And so I'm going to go ahead and show what the table looks like in the Dota2.heroes. Um, you can see that there, uh, each one of the subclasses in the Dota2 class has three attributes. There is the raw JSON data you get from the API. There is a pandas data frame that contains the data and a deep haven table that contains the data. So what we have in the bottom right now is a deep haven table with a list of all heroes, including their name in the game, the name as they show up in a game itself, uh, their other primary attributes, the roles that they fill, their attack type, and as I mentioned earlier, the number of legs they have. I find this kind of funny because the number of legs they have has absolutely no bearing on any gameplay. It's just something that the developers decided to add in. And uh, hey, it's more data, so I'm happy to, happy to look at it. Up next, uh, I'm going to do the same exact thing with the Dota 2 class, but with the other three subclasses that are there. So we've got, we're going to create three more tables, and I'll walk through each one of them very quickly. So this is a table of game modes in the game. Uh, there are 24 game modes currently. Um, every time you pull data for a particular game, it will have an attribute, uh, an attribute called game mode, and it will be an integer, and you can use this table to cross-reference what the game type actually is. It also has information on whether or not the game mode is balanced. For instance, an all-random death match is not balanced because when everybody gets a random hero, you could get really unlucky. Up next is items. There are uh, thousands of items, I believe. Uh, let's see how many. All right, 383 items currently available in the game. Um, this gives you the items ID, a tooltip, which actually it looks here. I, I need to add spaces in between these, um, which I'll do as soon as this is done. You get attributes, uh, what, it do, what the item does for you, some notes about the items, things like whether you know effects of multiple do not stack, things like that, as well as an image URL. Um, lastly is chat wheel, which I mentioned earlier, uh, is a set of emotes that you can use in the game. Some of these are, I, I believe you can pay for, or you can win via, you know, a contest or a performance. Um, but each one of these has an ID. These, these will get displayed in kind of a cool way in the game. There's even things that are not in English. Um, so all of this, you can cross-reference this. If you want to take a look at the chat table in a game, you know, hey, this uh, at time 431, um, player number three used chat wheel item seven, so I come back here and uh, said good job. Uh, I, I feel good for whoever he said good job for. And so the last thing I want to cover is the live matches interface. So this script uh, comes with the application that I built. You can run it, and it will pull from the live interface once every minute for one hour. And it creates two tables. 
the table that just showed up in the bottom right is a constantly updating table, or rather a once a minute updating table containing match ID and a various, a large amount of other information for the currently top ongoing line get live games or games that were recently played. Uh, it's a Tuesday afternoon, so there's probably not a ton of professional matches going on right now. So some of these you can see are not currently active. Um, you can see if they're played in a part of a league, the average MMR of everyone involved, team names, if it's a particular team or a league, um, information about the player IDs involved, um, player names, if they're in there, um, leaders, leads. I don't know why they're not just playing here. This stuff should... I think this is just something uh, with OBS taking too much of my... Yeah. With my processor being a little overburdened right now. Um, so that's... What I have for my demonstration today, uh, again, a lot of when if you use my application, a lot of this stuff will be predefined when you start it up. Um, feel free to go check it out and give it a try. Um, uh, I found this was probably the coolest thing I've worked on um, in a while. I think video game data science is absolutely fascinating. Um, if you're interested in just using the API, uh, the, the Open Dota API on your own, it's a REST API. You can access a REST API via basically any programming language you want. Um, and it, it's quite frankly, it's a good exercise. REST APIs are very common nowadays for a number of different things. So it's good to know how to use them, how to work with them, how to handle missing data, things like that. And if you're interested in the intersection of video games and data science, I highly recommend you check it out for yourself. I, am, I have been very impressed with pretty much everything about the API for my use so far. Um, that being said, uh, I don't want to go on for too long and I want to leave a few minutes for questions. So uh, I'm going to open it up for questions now. And again, you probably can't hear my desktop audio. So if I get asked anything in the Google meeting that I'm currently in, uh, I will be happy to, uh, I'll, I will repeat the question before I answer it. So if anybody has any questions, uh, now is the time. Okay, so it's quiet in the Google meeting, and uh, I don't ha currently have an eye on the YouTube comments. However, um, this video will be posted to the Deep Haven channel after the live stream is done. Please don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments. Uh, if you have them after the fact, I will do my best to answer them as soon as I can. Um, and if you go check out the Deep Haven, uh, my, my publicly available uh, GitHub repository with all the code that I've just discussed, um, try it up yourself. If you notice anything funky about it, please file a ticket and I will get to it and fix it as soon as I can. So hopefully uh, in the future, maybe I'll have another talk about this if I, I've expanded some capabilities or I have another interesting thing to talk about. But for those of you that came live today, thank you. If you watch this video after the fact, I also appreciate it. Um, and yeah, so thanks for coming and I'm going to sign off. Oh. Am I what? Uh, the, the question, there's a question on YouTube. Are you JJ the Observer? Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but uh, I will, if, if JJ the Observer is cool or does cool things, then yes, consider me JJ the Observer. So. Um, with that said, I'm going to close the live stream. Once again, please ask questions in the comments if you, uh, if you have any. So thanks. All right, the stream is over.